There is a danger of losing a large region of Israel. Not to war, not to outside pressure or political bargaining, but by default. The Galil is undisputed Jewish territory within the Green Line, vital for the defense and future development of the state. But over a million dunams of its rocky hills still lie bare and empty, threatened by encroachment, alienation, illegal squatting. Only a significant Jewish presence will ensure the region's future. That's why the Jewish National Fund has undertaken a major development program to bring new life, new settlers, new hope to the Galil. Galil Australia is part of it. As you all know, the Galilee is situated uh, with borders with three Arab countries, Lebanon, Syria and Jordan, of which of course the main threat is coming from Syria. It's impossible to defend Israel without the Galilee from which we can face Arab threats coming from both Syria and Lebanon. It's also impossible to think about our defense without the capability to initiate any preventive steps to defend the country. Either we have to do it against Lebanon or against Syria or against Jordan. So from a strategic point of view, the Galilee is a pivot to our defense. But not only that, as you know, we have in the Galilee uh, several hundreds of thousands of Arabs, Israeli Arabs, that for the moment live with us uh, in a very good relationship. But unfortunately, we cannot uh, prevent the assumption that sometimes some people might create a basis for the Arabs beyond the border. In that respect also, and from a demographic point of view, we have to place our settlements all over the Galilee so that there won't be any vacancy in the Galilee that uh, might be used by the Arabs, either in Israel or mainly from outside Israel, to launch an attack or to endanger our existence there. That's why for the last few years the placing of settlements took uh, place all over the Galilee and we try to increase the population of the Israelis, of the Jews, so that uh, we shall be able to create a balance between the number of Jews and Arabs that live in the Galilee. But we have to bear in mind that uh, we should not uh, think about the Galilee only as a province in order to defend the country. Not at all. Uh, we believe that the Galilee should become a center of itself with industry, with education, with increasing population, because unless that will be the reality, the Galilee will, will lose its importance and power. Always at the helm of Israel's development, the JNF joined the effort. ההתיישבות הכפרית בארץ ישראל היא בדרך כלל התיישבות חקלאית והגליל שהוא... Rural settlement in Israel is usually based on agriculture, but central Galilee is mainly rocky hills, unsuitable for cultivation. Therefore, large portions of it remained unsettled by Jews. That's why, together with the new pioneers and the official institutions involved, we worked out a new formula, the Mitzpim. Small, cohesive communities based on industry, tourism, and, where possible, farming. To settle quickly, they start with temporary accommodation. Later on, following the pace of the development and construction works, they move into permanent housing on their final site. These mitzpim serve essentially as landholds and as links in the population chain over the whole area. But this national need to settle the Galilee also coincided with the search by many Israelis for new values, an alternative lifestyle far from the rat race and urban stress. <laughs> In addition, the parks and sports facilities, developed thanks to Australian Jewry, do much to improve the quality of life, to attract new settlers, and to create a new branch of tourism, which offers leisure to Israeli vacationers from all over the country, as well as visitors from overseas. The Mitzpim project first got underway in 1977, and in all these eight years, only 5% of their residents have left, which represents an unprecedented success. Reclaiming land, building roads and planting trees, the JNF has helped the Mitzpim spread all over central Galilee. There are by now some 50 in number in five districts. Sipori, 
Turan, Salmon, Kefin, and Segev. It is in Segev that we find Galil, Australia, with Shorashim, Koranit, the Kefit, and Miss Gav. Miss Gav is developing fast and rapidly fulfilling its role as the community center for the whole Segev region, a kind of mini capital which fully lives up to its name, Miss Gav, safety and security on the high ground. The Misgav Regional Council is young, formed two years ago to serve 27 new mitzpim in central Galilee. To this end, we built this regional centre, which provides municipal and administrative services, health and social services, education and culture. Our school building already hosts 600 children and houses a central library sponsored by the Australian and B'nai Brit. The Misgav region, or Segev region as we also call it, today is home to some 3,000 Jewish inhabitants, and we plan to reach 15,000 people by the year 2000. Eight of our mitzpim are new immigrant settlements, coming from the USA, Canada, Australia, Belgium, South Africa, and the Soviet Union, and our regional center plays an important role in helping to absorb these newcomers. The more I live here, the more I realize how important it is to settle this part of Galilee. The demographic balance and the distribution of the population are very much to our disadvantage. The 150,000 non-Jews here in the Misgav region, as opposed to our 3,000 Jews, make for an almost uninterrupted chain of non-Jewish presence. That's why it's so important for the Misgav Center to provide the best service possible to our surrounding mitzpim, so that most of the time, most of the settlers will not only live here, but also work and invest all of their energy in this region. We're in close touch with the JNF in general and JNF Australia in particular. They have already carried out invaluable infrastructure and development work for us here in Misgav, as well as in Koranit, Rekevit and in Shorashim. Now we're concentrating on what is most lacking in Misgav, recreation and sports facilities. With Australian help, we're building a multifaceted park, Australia Park, that already offers facilities for football, simple relaxation and physical exercise. Thanks to the National Council of Jewish Women of Australia and various Australian schools, we will also have tennis courts, a roller skating rink, a basketball court and other attractions, thus bringing, as it were, much needed health and relaxation to our very doorstep. Additional recreation facilities are planned by Australian Nebrit. At, at, at the convention of Nebris uh, in April this year, it was decided to give first priority to uh, the development of the uh, Miskaf area and uh, the Nebris Park uh, will be developed there uh, in the very near future. And down the hill at the Misgav Road Junction, the Spiegels from Canberra are planning a picnic area so that the Segev settlers can enjoy the same back-to-nature outings so popular with Israelis throughout the country. Only walking distance away from Misgav is Rekevit, named after the beautiful bloom of the cyclamen. This Moshav Shitufi, or cooperative settlement, is peopled by young Israelis whose interests range from hothouse agriculture to fine jewellery. My family came here to Rakefet because we were looking for something young and little. We wanted to build something in Israel, in the Galil. We also wanted to work in agriculture and to live in a small community where we can help each other and uh, have a better social life, uh, something that we cannot find in the city. Australia is represented at Rekefit by the playground sponsored by Mrs. Millie Phillips of Sydney. I know that that part of the country is very inhospitable. I know that the accommodation there is very cramped. And I know that young limbs need to express themselves and so it's a playground. I would like also to say how much we appreciate the donation of the playground which uh, permit our children to play 
in the moshav and near the house and uh, it helps them very much and it helps also us. Last September the 5th, friends came from all over the entire Segev region to share the joy of a housewarming in the settlers' new permanent home. And we really hope that it will be the start of uh, increasing the number of families in Rakefet. Just up the road is Koranit, another moshav named after one of Galilee's fragrances, Wild Thyme. It's an energetic young community of people from all over the country who are seeking economic independence by way of science-based industry. They specialize in computer services and electronically controlled metalwork. We came from the kibbutz because we wanted to start a new life in a new place, in the wide open spaces and close to the soil. Most of the people here left the routine of city life in order to be more involved in shaping their own existence, to broaden their professional horizons, to work for a better life with their own bare hands. Making a living is a problem all over the country, and here too it's not easy. But still, a lot of people want to join us. There are a number of people in various towns already waiting for our new houses to be ready. And the more we build, the more people will come. Our target is 120 family units. Our own progress depends on that of the whole region. None of our mitzpim develops alone. We all grow together and the success of the whole block adds to the success of each separate village. Koronit's lively playground was donated by Melbourne's Mount Scopus College. It means a great deal for our children that now they can meet in a safe place, play and have a good time, even until late in the evening in such a lovely setting, instead of being out on the road or on the rocks, which can be dangerous. We are deeply grateful to all those Australian children who made such an effort for us. To the north of Misgav we find Shorashim. In Hebrew that means roots. New roots for its young families who came from the United States and Canada to fulfill a long-time Zionist dream, combining Jewish consciousness with modern professional and cultural ambitions. Their finest achievement so far is the development of electronic equipment for operating theatres. Uh, my name is Phyllis Bellin and I made Aliyah almost exactly five years ago. In one week it'll be exactly five years from New York with my infant son and my husband. And we came directly from the plane to Shorashim. Um, I think after five years, we basically have the same aspirations that we had when we came. And that's um, to build a healthy society, to build um, an economy that's based on high-tech industry, to build a community that, has, that will be a healthy place to bring up our children, and a community that has a substantial degree of Jewish content in the day-to-day -day life without being uh, coercive and also um, one of our principles is settling the Galil. After years of temporary accommodation in nearby Shkhania, Shorashim's new site is now ready for its settlers to plant their ultimate roots. The final move took place between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur last September. Moving to our permanent site this week has been very, very exciting and very important to us because for the, it'll help us in a lot of areas. One is in attracting new families, particularly the families with the backgrounds that we need in high-tech industry. And secondly, we'll have the proper facilities for our various activities, whether it's childcare, offices, social activities, or our industries that need very specific facilities for, to function and, um, because we're in high-tech industry and because we produce machines particularly to high specifications for um, operating room use in the hospital. Um, so all these things together, we're all really excited that we've moved and that we can start using the facilities that we have here um, to really build the Moshav on the base that we started in our temporary site at Chachanya. The love story and the working relations between the Karen Kayemet and the Galil started almost 60 years ago and even more. During those 60 years, there are few operations that, in my opinion, decided the future and the destiny of the Galil. 
If you take, for example, the giant project of the Hula Valley, the building of the settlements in the finger of the Galil during the early 30th, starting with the Mitsudot and going up and down all over the finger of the Galil. Then the operation of placing tens of settlements with new immigrants right after the War of Liberation. Then in the early 60s, what we call Mifza Sus, the settlements along the border between Lebanon and uh, Israel. And the latest one, the Mitzpim. What is a Mitzpeh? A Mitzpeh is a settlement in a place where it is so clear that we must be there. And a Jewish presence is important, essential and vital for the future, for the development, and for the security. But right now you don't know exactly what can be done there. And you build a mitzpeh, a lookout, an observation point. You know from the few families you want to build a settlement. From a beginning, a great future. It would have been impossible to achieve what we did achieve in Galil, Australia in the last few years if we didn't start 30 years ago to plant trees and to break through roads in the Segev area. One forest after another which made sure that the land is in our hands. Today when you go to Galil, Australia, to the Misgav region, you can understand the vision and the reality, the dream and the implementation. Believe me, my friends, all those who are going today to build the settlements in the Galil, they feel really they are near to God. I always remember a song which was written by a young Hebrew poet, Shimon Kasher. In Hebrew it says, Ulai lo ta'aminu, ani ma'amin. Amok amok ki nachpor ba'adama nimtza shvil amovil bashamay. Perhaps you won't believe I do believe, deep, deep, if we dig into the earth, we will find a path living up to the sky. That's what we are trying to do in Karen Kayemet. That's what we are trying to do with your help, the Jews in Australia, that they are playing such an important role in developing that area through Galil, Australia. When we came here five years ago and the sun would go down, the darkness would descend. It would be completely dark in the whole area. We felt completely alone. Today, when we look around in the hilltops, on each hilltop there's a cluster of lights. And each cluster of lights represents a new Jewish settlement that didn't exist five years ago. For us, it's a very exciting feeling to feel that we're part of building up a Jewish Galilee. A new society is in the making, where for centuries only barren, windswept hills stood in silent beauty. But the job is far from completed. True, Israel's economy is struggling with essential austerity measures, but the challenge of the Galilee cannot be ignored. Now more than ever, the Jewish National Fund needs your help in kindling those new lights of freedom and security on the mountaintops. Lights which give true meaning to that partnership, which is what Galil Australia is all about.